Do your best. I know that's not much, but do it anyway. One famous day we saw the way in deepest, darkest space To find the world of planet Earth, that dark, mysterious place We didn't want the Earth to know about our curious stairs And so we crossed the universe, disguised and dining chairs How do boats float? What do you do with cheese? Is that to go down by the shops to catch more to their fees? Has anybody found out why some people lose their hair? That's why we cross the universe disguised as dining chairs. Duck, how much is for? Why do they eat their tea? Can she wear socks to his big pen? What is a Christmas tree? We need to know what lives on Earth from ants to grizzly bears. And so we cross the universe disguised as dining chairs. Somehow, I don't think all this is going to plan. Get down to Earth, they said. Merge with your surroundings, they said. Find out what's really going on down there, they said. I found out what's going on. Nothing. Well, nothing here, at any rate. This can't be all there is to Earth, surely. It looked like there was a lot more going on through the telescope. Four days I've been here. It's been dark, then it's been light, then dark, then light. And from time to time, one of those odd-looking two legs will come in and sit on me. Oh, look out. There's one. She's obviously off to sit somewhere else. Now, where was I? Uh, what are you called? Stephen. I'm N3. Hello, Henry. Who's Henry? You are. You just said you were. N3, not... Oh, all right, Henry, if you like. Anyway, you promise you won't tell anyone. I couldn't tell anybody, Henry. They'd think I was potty if I told them we had a talking chair in our house. Hello, Entry. Got a proper report to make this time. I'm afraid I've... Uh, I've had to break the rules. I hope you have a jolly good reason. I've made contact with the Two Legs Cosmic One. Well, with a small Two Legs who lives here. I found out lots of things about them. Fascinating. However did you do it? I said... Hello to him, Cosmic One. And he told me all about the other two legs. He knows them, does he? Some of them. They're called his family and friends. He knows his family best. There's a big two legs called Mummy and a big two legs called Daddy and a very nasty little one called Trisha who keeps tipping me over and laughing. You're not supposed to be playing with them, Entry. This is a serious expedition. I'm helping him. Ask me how I am. Do they say, how are you feeling today, old chap? It must be very wearing for you trying to find out all about the planet Earth, particularly as we've sent you down there disguised as something as unhelpful as a dining room chair. Do they say anything even a little bit like that? Of course they don't. They say things like, you're not doing very well, N3. In fact, you're doing very poorly. Now stop wasting time and find out how everybody moves about on Earth, how they go from one place to another. I don't even know where the one place is, let alone trying to find the other place that everyone seems to be going to. I'm helping Henry, and I'm telling him everything I know. Stephen, give us a show over to the window, will you? Oh, no, not again, Henry. It's not easy pushing you, you know. I'd do the same for you if you asked. After all, I let you sit on me, and do I complain? Yes, you do. Do I ask if you wouldn't mind getting off for a bit or say, I'm sorry, but I don't feel like it today. It's not much to ask in return. All but... right, all right. You should try being a chair for a time. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. I would feel pretty bad if I was... Oh, yes, here you are. Thanks. It's all right. Oh! I'm helping him. And I'm telling him everything I know. Evening, Henry. Hello, sir. 
I hope you've got something worthwhile to tell us. Not one of our explorers has had anything decent to report recently. I think you'll like what I've got for you, sir. What's that, then? The garden, sir. Great hold on, Zen 3. I thought you were going to tell us something interesting. We don't want to hear you going on about gardens. I mean, who wants to know about fluffy white things that float in the sky? Very boring. Tedious, but that's gardens for you. No, it isn't. Those are clouds. Gardens are green patches of ground with coloured flowers on them found beside houses. Are you sure, Entry? According to our chap on Planet Grax, gardens float about in the sky. Not down here, they don't. Well, that sounds a bit better, then. So what about these clouds, then? I mean, gardens. Well, they're fascinating areas which can be almost any size, but what they have in common is that the big two legs make a dreadful fuss over these highly coloured flower things. Fond of them, are they? They hate them. They try desperately hard to get rid of the things. But I gather it can take months, almost a whole summer sometimes, before they go away. The two legs spray them with liquid to try and drown them, dig all round them, ripping up huge great clumps of stuff in the process. They even set ferocious little flying creatures called bees on them, which fearlessly attack the flowers, but with little effect as far as I can see. It sounds like an all-out war out there. It is. Occasionally, if nothing else works, and as the final solution, the two legs will cut the flowers straight out of the ground and bring them inside the house. No. Incredible. Simply incredible. What? Devastating cruelty. There, the flowers are put into large pots or vases and displayed in the window, where they can be clearly seen as a warning to other would-be flowers exactly what treatment they can expect should they be stupid enough to want to grow in some two-legs garden. Well, that would certainly put a stop to it, I would imagine. Drastic but effective. You won't believe me, but the flowers keep coming back for more. They're either very brave or incredibly stupid. And certainly very lazy, hanging about in bed all day. Well, let's hope for the sake of the two legs. They stay there and don't get organised. Gangs of flowers roaming the streets, seeking revenge for all those cuttings. Not a pleasant thought. Frightening. Absolutely. Well, we must be off, Entry. Well done. Much more interesting than all the stuff on Planet Cracks. Thank you, sir. Watch out for the flowers, Entry. My eyes are peeled. Worrying, those gardens, aren't they, Cosmic Two? Great bunches of flowers floating about in the sky, threatening everyone. It's not natural. Ah, I think you're still confusing them with the clouds. You like it, Henry? What do I like? It's her dress. She's wearing it. Oh, wearing it? That thing covering her body? It's my party dress. It's very pretty. You say so. See? Henry thinks it's a stupid dress, too. No, I don't. It's just that I don't think one way or the other when it comes to two-leg coverings. If you don't say it's the prettiest frog in the whole world, well, then I'll shake you till you tip over. Love it. Fabulous. It's quite the most outstanding uh, frock that I've ever seen. It's an enormous success. See? I knew Henry would like it. Come along. I'm going to my party now. You're not. That's true. Tell me about the two leg coverings. I've been meaning to find out about them for some time. I'm helping him, and I'm telling him everything I know. Cosmic One, when you were going to all the trouble of sending me down here with all the maps and the special spaceship and the special disguise, you never said anything about how I'm supposed to get back. I mean, Earth's very nice, it's fascinating. In fact, apart from that awful cat Desmond scratching my legs, it's probably the nicest place I've ever been to. All the same, I would like to know how I'm supposed to get home to Holgon. But if I just ask him, he'll change the subject and talk about his potato again. I shall have to say, I know it's very nice to get away for a bit, but it's also very nice to go home, and I'm not exactly built for blasting off and hurtling through the super deepest outerest space. I mean, I need Stephen just to push me over to the window and back. Maybe then he'll let me pop back to Holgon, even for a short time. You go on holiday for days and days and days, weeks. Are you going for days and days, weeks? Well, for a bit, anyway. We go every year, you know. And what does everybody else do? Who? Everybody here, you know. Flatty, the talented ones on the television. Skinny. Me. I suppose they just wait until we come back. Normally. And what if it's not normally? What do they do then? Look. It's just a holiday, Henry. Everyone has to have a holiday. Ah, oh, it's the rules, then. I don't know. Daddy just says everyone has to have a holiday. For days and days, weeks? Well, for a bit, anyway. 
Hello, N3. Everything going according to plan? I'd like to talk to you about the plan. Oh, yes. How do you plan to get me back to Holgon, then? You don't want to leave this lovely front room, do you? Well, I'd like to know what my going home plan is. Ah, it's very secret. You can tell me. It is my going home plan. It's so secret, even I don't know anything about it. Well, I'll have to ask Cosmic One, then. Hello, N3. How's the Earth today? It's a long way from Holgon, that's how it is. How am I going to get home? Um... That's secret. Well, Cosmic 2 doesn't know. He says it's too secret, so you must know. Well, if you tell me about your new discoveries, I'll try and find out about how we're going to get you home. That's fair? Very fair, I'd say. Do your best. I know that's not much, but do it anyway. One famous day we saw the way in deepest, darkest space To find the world, the planet Earth, that dark, mysterious place We didn't want the Earth to know about our curious stairs And so we crossed the universe, disguised and dining chairs How do boats float? What do you do with cheese? Is that to go down by the shops to catch more to their feet? Has anybody found out why some people lose their hair? That's why we cross the universe disguised as dining chairs. How much is for? Why do they eat their tea? Can she press on to his big pen? What is a Christmas tree? We need to know what lives on Earth from ants to grizzly bears. And so we cross the universe disguised as dining chairs. Henry, I'm helping Henry, and I'm telling Henry everything I know. I'm not doing well, I can tell. It's the little signs that give it away, like when Cosmic One says to me, N3, you're not doing well. I don't think it's all my fault, though. I mean, if you are stuck in a sitting room with no chance of going any further than the window, and even then only if Stephen agrees to push you, then your reports are bound to be less than Holgon shattering. No one can be fascinating every day when nothing more exciting happens than to see how much dust lands on the table before the big two legs called Mummy comes and takes it away with a yellow cloth. I wonder what she does with all the dust she picks up. She must have a very impressive collection by now. Anyway, back on Holgon, the career prospects are not looking that good. Not unless I can come up with something really gripping and new that will impress Cosmic One. He wasn't very impressed about the telephone. It's never easy being an explorer on the spot. Oh, yes, it's easy for them to criticise up there, but they're not down here. I am. And what's more, I'm a dining room chair. I wonder where the explorers are from down here. They must have them, after all. Every planet worth its salt has got explorers. They must do something with their time. But then I've never heard of any of them turning up on Holgon, not even passing through, dropping in for a quick how-do-you-do and hyperdrive refuel. I wonder if the big two legs called Daddy is an explorer. If not, he's bound to no one. I'll ask Stephen. Stephen! What is it? What does the big two legs called Daddy do all day? Is he an explorer? An explorer? What's an explorer? You know, someone who travels all over the stars, discovering new worlds, crossing the galaxy in search of new races and reporting back to those waiting in his homeland. I'm an explorer, Stephen. You're a dining room chair. We've been through this, Stephen. Yes, I know I look a bit like a dining room chair at the moment, but... Yes, you do. Exactly like a dining room chair. Yes, I know, but I'm not really a dining room chair. I'm an explorer. Well, if you're not really a dining room chair, how come can I sit on you? My disguise is perfect, that's why. Now, is the big two legs called Daddy an explorer or not? No, he's a daddy. 
He doesn't even look like a dining room chair. He doesn't have to look like a chair to be an explorer. Most of the time, I don't look like a chair. I explain that. Well, I don't think he does any exploring like you said. No one's ever told me anything about him visiting other stars at all. I'm sure Mummy would have said something like that if he had gone anywhere like that. But he does go to the office every day. Most days, anyway. I've never heard of the planet The Office before. Is it in your solar system? Perhaps it's between Mars and Venus. I'll get Cosmic 2 to look it up on the maps in the Atlas. It's not a planet. It's a place. What, here on Earth? So he's an explorer on his own planet. Fascinating. I don't think he's an explorer. Well, what else is there? What do you mean? Well, what does he do when he gets to The Office? I'm not quite sure. I think he pushes paper about. Well, that sounds worthwhile anyway. You can't have great heaps of paper building up everywhere, can you? I suppose not. Someone's got to push them about. It sounds very reasonable. So do all the two legs called Daddy push paper about at the office? Not all of them, no. But a lot that live round here do, and the mummies do as well, sometimes. This office place must be very large if they can fit in there every day. Still, I suppose it's all right as long as there's enough paper to go round. Not all people work in offices. Some people go to the factories. What are they? They're places where you make things. Really? What sort of things? Heaps of paper for the other two legs to push about? Not only that. Do you like it? Fascinating. Oh, look, that one's making sparks. He's very good at it, isn't he? They're going all over the place. What does he catch them in? That bucket on his head. Oh. That one's making a lot of noise. Ah, that one's making splashes. Very nice. And that two legs is making a terrible mess. And who made those? They did. What, as well as the sparks and things? Yes. That's marvellous, isn't it? So let me get this straight. Some of the big two legs push paper about at the office and some make things in factories. Oh, that's quite a choice, isn't it? On whole gone, you're either an explorer or you're not. It's not much of a decision to make, really, when you leave school. I'd like to be an explorer. It sounds much better than being a boy. Well, you wait, young Stephen. Maybe you'll be one. Mind you, it's not all dashing about the universe on exciting missions, you know. Isn't it? No, it's not all discovering strange new creatures and weird places, often having to fight your way out of sticky situations with unfriendly natives. Only we top explorers get those kind of missions. No, no, now and then some of the unlucky ones have to go on boring missions like... like, um... Like being the dining room chair? No. Well, yes. Yes, all right, then. It still sounds fun. Does it? Being the dining room chair? Well, it's a job, I suppose. Down here, you've got lots of jobs to choose from. The office or the factory or possibly being an explorer. That's an amazing choice. There's lots more. Never. Oh, yes, loads. You can work in shops selling things to people. That two legs is very kind. Well, I suppose if you had all that stuff, you'd have to share it around. It's far too much for just one person. It's not hers. She just works there, selling it to other people. This is the shops, isn't it? Fish fingers and furniture polish, yes? OK. Oh, that's a bus driver. That's not a job, surely. It looks like he's having far too much fun. Yes, it is. You can have fun when you're working. Oh, that's fun. I bet even holding that stick's fun. Not as much fun as jumping over it, though. They're dolphins. That man's looking after them. That's his job. I think they're looking after him. He's hungry. That's a machine. It's a digger. It's a very hungry digger. Who's that? That's the man who works the digger. Why is he giving the other one all that earth? Oh, is this like pushing paper around at the office? No, it's heaps more fun. Look, there's 
is the man that shines lights at ships. Shines lights at ships? Yes, he lives in that tower and shines the light that's on the top there at passing boats. What? Oh, I won't even ask. Is that the lot, then? No, not at all. There are nurses and doctors who look after you when you are sick. And police will do tell you the time and help you if you get lost. And there are people who sweep the roads and keep them clean. And there's the Queen. What does the Queen do? Oh, she's in charge of everyone. She visits places and ways. She wears a crown and opens things. What sort of things? Bottles and cans of food? Probably. Well, you could do that. She also pulls curtains open with pieces of string. She's particularly good at that. Well, if I had to work down here, I don't think I'd want to be Queen. I'd rather shine lights at boats. Why? I've never been one for waving, and I haven't got anywhere to put a hat. Stephen, look at the mess. Come up here at once. Coming! Sorry, Henry. I have to clear up my room. Is that your job? It is now. Is it harder than being the Queen? Yes, it jolly well is. You poor thing. Oh, I forgot to ask if you knew any explorers. Stephen! Oh, well. I'll leave that bit out. Hello there, Henry. Anything new on that dust collection with the big two leg called mummy hairs? Nothing startling, sir. I think it's coming along nicely from what I've seen. Good. And what about the potato? Yes, Andrew, you're not getting to grips with my potato. Now, what does it eat? Where is it hiding? And why haven't you captured one for me? I gather they're very quick on their feet. If they've got feet. Well, build a potato trap. You're an explorer. It's your job. Jobs? That's what I want to talk to you about. The jobs that the two legs have down here. Who cares what jobs the two legs do? Tell us what work the chairs and tables do. That would be interesting. I don't think they do a lot. Nonsense. As superior beings, they must hold important positions down there. I would be very disappointed if you haven't found out anything about them, N3. Oh, uh, well, I have studied them in detail. Good. So what do they do? Well, when it comes to it, uh, the table is... A table. Uh, he concentrates on being a table on the whole and is very good at it, I may add. And as for being a chair, I gather from everyone around here that being a chair is pretty much a full-time job. The superior race, of course. You wouldn't expect them to do anything else, would you? A chair is a chair. Always has been, always will. But the two legs do all sorts of things. They've got road sweepers and paper bushers and spark makers and doctors and the queen and the two legs that shines lights at ships. Good and... holgons. Can't they make up their minds what they want to do? And nurses and postmen and soldiers and train drivers and someone who puts bits of paper on car windscreens for some reason. Stop! Enough! Do they have any explorers? Um, not as far as I can make out, sir. They're too busy doing all the other things. Oh, yes, and the small two legs have to clean up their rooms before they can become bigger and learn to shine lights on ships or be the Queen. Perhaps if they concentrated more on exploring or took a few lessons from the chairs on being single-minded, they would be a lot better off. Could be, sir. Definitely. Remember, once a wardrobe, always a wardrobe. If you think about that, you won't go far wrong. Now we must get back. I feel quite tired. Maybe you've been working too hard, sir. You're not trying to be funny, are you, Cosmic too? Oh, that's it, then. They weren't very impressed by that lot, were they? How the whole gun am I going to build a potato trap? Still, I suppose it's better than being the Queen. And where do you think you're going, Stephen? Exploring! One famous day we saw the way in deepest, darkest space To find the world from planet Earth, that dark, mysterious place We didn't want the Earth to know about our curious stairs And so we crossed the universe disguised as dining chairs What is sand? Why do birds fly? Why do you use clothes pegs? If peaches have such nice soft skin, do apricots have legs? How do you get to be a king? Do leopards like their lairs? That's why we cross the universe disguised as...